Sarah, there are big expectations out there because the XRT is up 40% this year. I mean, that's huge. So obviously, as investors look forward, we're we're assuming a huge recovery here. But I think, you know, to one of the theme Brian's, Brian was talking about, which is travel. I mean, I think the consumer, the wealthy consumer, particularly who's gotten wealthier during the past year, will be ready to bust out and travel and what comes along with that. You've got cosmetics, you've got apparel. So I think you can look at things like um, Ulta. I think you can look at PVH, by the way, which is 40% exposed to Europe. And we're basically locked inside in Europe at the moment. So I think that consumer is going to be ready to absolutely get out there when they can. I'm looking at your list of favorites. You have Nike and Lululemon on there. I've covered both of these companies and the quarters that they have just put up. Amazing to see double-digit revenue growth for retailers. But hasn't that already been factored into the market? These are both trading at very high valuations. You, you would think so. So those two stocks have had a massive run. But a couple things. If you think about, first of all, Nike. So what are they doing? Most of retail brands are talking about lower sales but higher margins because inventories are so low, so they're selling full price. Nike, on the other hand, is talking about double-digit revenue growth and higher margins because they are culling their wholesale channel that is usually highly promotional and taking charge of their business. Um, so I think for them, there is a huge opportunity, and I think this is likely a $200 stock by the end of 2021. And on Lululemon, you and I what talked about, about this last yeah, Sorry? So you and I no, talked no, about this ahead, last Lulu. On Lululemon, so another one of the themes I think Brian was talking about was the obesity problem that needs to be addressed in um, worldwide. And Lulu just dropped larger sizes up to 20, and they're finally getting serious about larger sizes. So I think that coupled with their outdoor gear, which is much higher price ticket, moves this stock into the next leg of growth here. If you look at the best performers recently, Tapestry is up 7% for the week. It's, it's actually had an amazing run up 88% in the last three months. There's a, there's a new CEO there. There's a profitability story there. How do you pick those kind of comeback stories that got absolutely slammed during the pandemic and whose businesses suffered from it? So I think there, there's a group of stocks. If you look at Ralph Lauren, Tapestry, Capri, what, what has gone on there? So they're selling a lot less stuff. Tapestry actually is probably toward the top of that, um, doing better than the most. But they're, again, they're selling at a higher margin. They're not promoting. They're raising prices. Why? Because their inventories are so lean right now because everybody stopped ordering so early in the year because they didn't know what to expect. So investors were eager to play a higher margin story. However, this now assumes that you're returning to nice revenue growth next year and beyond. And this, to me, is very reminiscent of 2016 when we saw the same thing. These brands cleaned up their wholesale channel. There were higher margins. But guess what? The revenue growth never followed through when things normalized. And I think on these particular stocks, hmm. that is a likely scenario going forward. Stacey Widlitz, thank you very much. Happy holidays. Good to see you. Happy holidays to you. You too. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.